and welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs, Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, local silver sneakers and group exercise instructor. Hey, won't you join me for some exercise? I, I wanted to encourage you to, to continue to have a good mask face covering with you at all times because a lot of merchants in Yellow Springs still are asking their clients, customers to wear one. So please keep some on hand. Who knows, we might need them seasonal. We've got to keep rolling with the changes, don't we? So, hey, before we start this exercise program, whether it's new or old to you, I've been doing it since April 6, 2020. Anyway, Please consult your physician and go at your own pace. If anything hurts, sudden, sharp, shooting pain, that means to stop. Let's say you just feel uncomfortable with a, a, a particular movement and you want to watch and participate from your chair. You are correct. So trust your instincts, go at your own pace, do your best, and then rest when you need to. So let's make sure we've got a clear area, well lit and sturdy, appropriate shoes on for this exercise session. Um, and we'll use some music. We've got some water and hopefully you do too. Uh, I'm gonna tuck that underneath the footprint of the chair. Today we'll be using a hand weight and a rubber tubing. Maybe you've got those rice or rice or lentil filled socks that we made a while back or hand weight or a jug filled to your desired amount of weight. This is about the same as the jug that I've been using or a 10 pound weight. And guess what? When I get tired, I can just put it down. <laughs> you too. All right, let's get started. Remember, you can do this whole workout as much as you feel able in your chair. And when you're standing, please remain within touch or reach and within your peripheral vision of your chair. That way you know that you can use it to your advantage and it won't trip you up. Okay. We're going to use some world beat music. Why not? I like to use different beats and rhythms from all over the world. So just getting started, whether you're seated or standing, always try to elongate your torso. And this posture permits us to move with greater ease because the spine has more comfort and area between the vertebrae for your nerves to emanate and do their job. And there's more room for our lungs. So, ears over shoulders over hips, whether you're in your chair or in the air. And just sort of move at your own pace, perhaps with this marching cross crawl opposite arm motion. You can also just pedal your feet. You don't even have to lift them off the floor to start to limber up. That's what the warm up is. It's just a gradual, getting ready for more and it is the most important part of your workout warming up gradually and cooling down gradually ideally we're breathing in through our nose but if you're stopped up i know i'm having a little seasonal allergies myself you can breathe through your mouth just go at your own pace and breathe all right let's widen out our stance a little if you can, reach out and touch your chair. You could be directly behind it or off to the side. I'm gonna to come to the front so you can just better see what I'm doing with my feet. Sort of flexing down into a little mini squat. Hips, knees, and ankles flexing, pushing into the ball of the foot and the toes, and drawing shoulder up to the ear. Maybe rolling that shoulder backward, little by little, making that range of motion bigger, unless it hurts, and then you make it smaller. That's one adaptation you can always do, is reduce the range of motion if something's uncomfortable. Or just do one side. 
or go back to something that felt better to you. So you could do all of those. Let's reach across the body, pull the navel in, keep the head right over the shoulders and hips. And if it feels good, open and close your chest. Perhaps leading the thumbs backward and then the pinkies forward to get a little, a little rotation through the shoulders. Good, I hope it feels good. All right, I want to, as we continue warming up, show you a couple patterns we're gonna to use today. Some will be very familiar to some of you, some may not. So let's practice together while we warm up. The first one is a, is a kickbox routine, if you would like, to get your, on the right side of your chair, get your left foot slightly ahead of the right, and sink down into a triple flexion, and we're gonna punch across the body as a cross three times. And we're gonna draw that left knee up. So it's one, two, three, left knee up. We've got our chair if we need it. If we don't, we could bring that other guard, that other arm up to guard. We can do this slow. Breathing, or we can do it a little bit faster. One, two, three, knee. And later on, when we're good at warming, if you feel it's in your abilities, your comfort zone, you can go even faster. Punch, two, three, knee. Got it? We can also take it to the side really quickly. One, two, three, with a little side kick. And of course, we can do that slow or at tempo or a little faster. Boom, 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 pow. Punch, two, three, kick. Got it? We'll do more of that in different ways. The other pattern is not about speed as much as it is about bounce. It's called a lift, two, three, march, two, three. So we can lift our knee three times using our chair, and then lift our other knee three times, march two, three, in between. I'm using our chair as our balance check. You can make this lift small. Knowing you've got that chair there, one finger really stabilizes our balance. Or we can tap our toe down for a balance check. Likewise, you could make it bigger. And we might even go up to doing seven balances or lift, two, three, four, five, six, seven, march, two, three, and then we'll lift for seven more. All right, hopefully that got your blood circulating. Remember you up a little. We're gonna continue to warm up with a dynamic stretch. That means moving a little bit while seated. When you get seated, I know I sound like a broken record, please get a nice wide stable base and maybe have your heels touch the actual front legs of the chair or the couch or whatever you happen to be sitting on. That way if you lose your balance, well, you're right there and you're not on the floor. A big part of this chair interval training and flex silver sneakers class is to reduce your risk of falls. It's evidence-based exercise. And the more we regularly participate, the greater our chance of reducing our risk of falls. And there's a lot you can do at home, too. More on that later. Okay. Oh, this is a good time to get a drink of water. Whenever we get seated. Take your time when you're getting things down low. Step to the side, lean to the side to protect your lower back. Posture, sitting on the edge of your seat, pulling the navel in, pulling the crown of the head up. Let's pretend we're conducting music. Getting those arms going and really opening the fingers and flowing through the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists. Good. All right. Let's put those hands in our lap and then try stepping 
out, out, in, in with our feet, right, left, and then let's put our conducting music arms with that. Just limbering up the shoulders, opening and closing the chest. If you wanted to, you could do this a little bit faster. If not, keep at your own pace. Good. If you want to, you could go even faster. Crazy feet. Shake it out those hands. Good. Walk those feet out wide. Sort of like creating a V with your thighs. Knees pointing the same direction as toes. Hinging forward and supporting on your lap. Gently opening the hips to get a gentle inner thigh stretch. And if you roll your shoulder forward, keeping the chin up above the level of the heart, you might enjoy a back of the shoulder upper back stretch. If you have other stretches you like to do, walk those feet in. By all means, do them. Sitting tall, pull the navel in, and stretch out your right leg, then your left. If it feels good, pull the navel in, and brace it, push the sole of the foot out. Like that kickbox fighter that we were practicing earlier. Throw a punch, opposite arm. Keep your guard up. Going sort of slow. Sitting tall. Brace with the belly and breathe as if someone were gonna punch you, but they're not. If you want, you can do it a little bit faster. Right and left. Good. Oh, it's good for you. Four more. Three, two. Let's leave that right foot in the air and flex and point. You can support underneath that right leg if you like. Flexing and pointing the ankle. Excellent. Let it settle down on the ground. Support your spine here. Inhale up. Take a bit of a bow. Again, keeping the back long, strong, and chin and head above your heart. Reach forward and breathe, lift the toes and fingers up, and then push them down. Good, sitting tall, pull the navel in and draw that knee toward your chest for a good back of the hip stretch. And good flowy circles with that right foot angle and then the other direction. You can always keep that heel on the ground if it hurts your hip, pull it up. Let's try extending that left leg, supporting underneath. Flex the foot and then point. Sitting tall, flex and point. Good. Set it. Settle that left heel on the ground. Inhale, lengthening your torso. If the shoulder hurts, shorten that limb. If it doesn't, lengthen it. Lifting the toes and the fingers to develop that hamstring calf stretch, and then pushing down, sole to the ground, stretching the front of the ankle joint. Pull the navel in like you're sipping up tight pants. Settle back, drawing knee toward the chest, and drawing circles with the left foot and ankle. Other direction. Good, all right, sitting tall, take a deep breath, and let's assess for a moment our intensity. We're gonna use our scale of one being the lowest possible intensity to 10 being way too high, our breath could barely talk. And today, like every day we meet, I'm gonna suggest you shoot for a four to a seven or eight, an eight is I feel okay, but I cannot sustain this pace for very much longer. That means you just need to bring it back into your own speed, pace, abilities. And you could continue in your chair, or you could take a brief rest, whatever you need. All right, so let's start with that. About 10 minutes of our kickboxing routine. But before we do, I'm going to suggest a hydration break. Remember, step to the side, lean to the side to 
support your back. Okay. Let me check my time. Well, this is a short one. Well, we'll just do our best. Okay. Very good. Yeah, let's start over here on the left since we rehearsed it on the right. Um, that way we won't overdo. Now, remember, go at your own pace, do your best, just keep moving in a way that suits you today. Every day is a little different. We gotta roll with those changes. Just don't go rolling on the floor. Better yet, double check your, your chair, your, your work site, and make sure everything's tucked underneath the footprint of the seat. Okay, on the left side of our chair, let's get that right leg slightly ahead of the left. Sink into our athletic lunge or split stance. We can keep our right hand on the chair and start real slow with three left crosses. Turn your hip, stay low, breathe, and then we're gonna pull that right knee up. Slow one more time. Power into it. Right knee, shift your weight back. A little faster tempo. You can use your chair, punch, two, three. This is called a cross, because it's crossing our body. <laughs> you can make sound if you want. It It really helps with the breathing sometimes to let out what fighters call ki ya Yeah. Stay low in your stance. If you don't need your right hand for balance, you can bring it up and guard. Are you ready to go a little bit faster? Punch, two, three. Cross, two, three. Keep it smaller. Roll with the punches. Ha, breathe. Ha. Can you do four more? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One more time. Whoa. How are you doing on our intensity scale? How's your breathing? Doing all right? Well, let's slow down and learn our side jab. And this time we're gonna kick to the side, nice and low, control. Got our right hand on our chair. Sinking down into a squat stance. We're gonna jab three times to the left, real slow. Using your chair, kick. One more time, real slow. Put your weight into it, shifting your weight, and kick. Now to tempo. Kick. Three, two, one. Shifting our weight a little bit. Putting, packing some power behind our punch. Getting our heart rate up. Strengthening our legs and our balance and our rhythm too. You got your chair if you need it for balance. Are you ready to take it up a notch? Jab, two, three, kick. Stay within yourself there. Go at your own pace. Good. How you doing? Yeah, two, three. How about four more like that? Four, three, two, one. Woo! How you doing? Shake it loose. Catch your breath. Are you in a good zone with your intensity, like a four to an eight? I hope so. We're gonna continue. But before we go to the other side, let's come behind our chair and work on a little bit of a, I like to call it speed work with our hands and if desired with our feet. So behind your chair you've got that for your balance check. I'm going to come around to the front but you stay behind so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. So for, for now just stay in our slightly grounded athletic mini squat and take those hands up and pretend you're punching one of those speed bags. You can punch high. 
medium, low, you can push off to the right, off to the left, middle. You can go faster if you like. Now shift your weight to the right and the left, but a little bit faster. So you're just shifting. Here it is without a hand if you want, just shifting. You got your chair if you need it. Just getting our heart rate up. Adding back those arms if you like. Faster. Hands up high will really raise your heart rate. Down a little bit lower, still raising your heart rate and working on coordination. Switch the direction. Take it to the right. Take it to the middle. Take it to the left. Take it all the way over your head if you like. And back again. Woo, good. Did that get your heart rate up a little? All right. We're gonna do that kickbox routine. Or here on the right. So use your left hand near your chair. Now we're going to get that right leg. I'm sorry, we're gonna get that. <laughs> that left leg slightly ahead of the right and sink down into our athletic mini lunge or split stance. Ideally, we're on the ball of that rear foot, but if that hurts the ball of your foot, you have arthritis in that big toe metatarsal joint, just turn the toe out a little and do your best. Three crosses with the right. Two. Three. Now I'll raise that left knee. Boom. Good, so sink low, you got your chair, cross the body three times and then shift your weight. One more time, slow. Shift your weight back. Boom, now to tempo. Three, two, one. Got our chair if we need it, stay low. Pull the navel in, especially when you lift that left knee. doing? Staying with it? I hope so. Turning that hip a little really adds power and burns more calories. Uses more leg and hip strength too. How about one more at tempo? And if you like, we'll kick it up a notch. A little quicker. Jab, two, three, knee. Actually, this is a cross. Cross, two, three, knee, four more. Three more. Two more. Last time. Woo! Shake it loose. How you doing? You got enough steam, enough gas in the tank to do this to the side again? Coming to a slightly wider squat, mini squat athletic stance. Jab. Two, three, now lean into that left leg and kick low and powerful with the right. Two, three, are you ready to go? Tempo, here we go. Jab, two, three, kick. Got our chair if we need it. Breathing. Boom, jab. Shift your weight. Stay low. Good. Two more at tempo. And if you like, a little bit faster. Jab, two, three, kick. You got your chair. Stay low. If you don't need your chair, you can lift that guard up. Four more at tempo or at speed. Three more, two more, one, pow, Woo. it's a little hot in here now for me, how about you? All right, let's finish it off, again behind our chair, for a little speed work, this is our agility work, it's helping reduce our risk of falls, because if you're about to fall, you might need to get low and move your feet fast. So behind your chair is best. I'm gonna be in front seat. So you wanna do it on my feet. 
We're gonna use what a lot of fighters and athletes, um, men and women, all ages use, but an imaginary jump rope. And we're going to just pretend we're jumping over it. Maybe skip, skip. You can skip with just one leg or you can skip, skip, skip. You can skip slow. If you're behind your chair, you can grab it anytime you need. You can use your jump rope with one arm. The beauty of the imaginary jump rope is you never miss. <laughs> you don't have to jump, but you can add a little bounciness. Building balance and strength in the legs and bringing our heart rate up. If you wanted, you could do that faster. And I bet you know, if you wanted, you could do it even faster. Can you feel that rope and hear that rope skipping on the ground? You could do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How about on one foot? One, two, three, four, five, six, other foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do it again. One, two, three, four. I had to touch my toe down. Last one. Woo. Okay. I'm ready to take a break. How about you? Won't you transition to your chair with me, if you're not already there, and do your best squats? Just one in fine form is great. If you want to try for eight, that's dandy. Anywhere in between, super duper. Best form would have you feel comfortable. Feet hip width or a little wider. Feet ideally touching the chair. I'm gonna experiment. Some of us need a slight turnout in the toes. But hinging the hips back, keeping the head and chest up. Going down with control. Up with a little bit of oomph or power will get you some good hip, thigh, lower back strength results if you do it regularly over time. Body weight squats are really good for you, but you know that if you've been listening to me for just one session. <laughs> All right, what else is really good for us? A little rest and a little hydration. We're going to use our hand weight next. I'm sorry. Let's use our band, our rubber band next to do a set of strength work. With this elastic tubing and the handles, ideally, remember the shorter the distance between your hand, or in this case, your hand and one foot, the harder the resistance, it's essentially like it's lifting more weight. What we're gonna do is a one arm row, placing both handles in our left hand, making a loop. We're gonna sit near the edge of the chair and stick that right foot through the loop, supporting with our right hand on the lap. See how it feels to keep the weight or the handles close to your body and row. If that's really easy or you have a lot of slack on your band because it's long, you could reach through those triangular handles or just down closer to your foot. Now we've got more resistance. There, I've got it about right. Ideally, you could introduce a little rotation, slowly looking back over that left shoulder, pointing that elbow to where the ceiling meets the wall behind you. Keeping the hand close to the shoulder at the top is ideal for shoulder health. Strengthening the upper back, the biceps, the rear shoulder, and with this rotation, we're doing a little bit of, of abdominal work. If you wanted more, you could lean back, but keep your weight in that front right foot. That's hard. And then you're gonna get a little more torso, or core involvement. And I have about run out of gas with this one arm row. 
I think I've done close to 16 repetitions. So let's loosen that up and switch it to the other side. So both handles on the right hand, left foot, do that loop. Two things on the inside of the left knee, left hand supporting there. See how that right arm feels. If it's too easy, remember you could increase the resistance by reaching closer to the foot, keeping the arm close to your body. There we go. One arm row, keeping the hand close to the shoulder, especially at the top. Now if you want, you can add rotation and look up and over that right shoulder toward your trailing right elbow, which ideally is pointing up kind of where the ceiling meets the wall. If that hurts you though, you could do it straight across the body. And remember, if you want to pull that navel in and try to lean back while you rotate, that's going to give you a lot more core strength. Just do your best. We've been doing a lot of pulling, so those upper back, rear shoulder pulling muscles are probably feeling momentary muscular fatigue. And if you're like me and you need to stop, good for you. That means you've probably worked close to the threshold of intensity needed to build strength. So we do need a little break between strength exercises. So what we're going to do is work on our pushing muscles now and a little bit more of our abdominals. So bring your feet together a little ahead of your knees. Perch right at the edge of your seat. We're going to do, we're going to set up to do some chest presses, but not yet. Just get that tubing behind your upper back, right under your armpits. And then just bring your hands close to your chest. Tuck your tailbone under, pull your navel in, lean back. If you want, you could stretch out your right leg as you sit tall and then your left. So we're building strength in those leg extensor muscles, the quadriceps, and the abdominals. If it hurts your lower back, you don't have to do that leg raise. And always one leg at a time, please. Okay, now we're gonna add in a chest press. I didn't feel that chest press too much, so I'm gonna create more resistance, pulling the tube closer to my shoulder joint, leaning back, and then pushing forward. There we go. Now we've got a whole body exercise, if you please. Good, do as best you can. Strengthening chest, triceps, and fronts of the shoulders with this chest press. Strengthening quadriceps and abdominals with this leg extension and sit up. And I'm about done. I'm gonna try one more with the right leg. You can stop whenever you need. One more on the left. Wow. Okay. One more strength set, but I'm going to turn down the music a little. I apologize, it got a little louder than I meant. Okay, now, for this last set of strength work, I couldn't find my handle. We're going to need to sit back in the chair and touch the chair with our heels to set up for doing, yes, squat, <laughs> if you want. Now, holding the tubing, with about shoulder width between your hands, you can loop it or you can just let it dangle. Reach to where the ceiling meets the wall in front of you. Create some tension. Dig your heels and your toes into the floor, but don't stand up yet. Just pull that to the part and tuck your elbows down, pointing back at the floor where the floor meets the wall behind you, and then where the wall meets the ceiling. Somewhat of a diagonal lateral pull down, strengthening up the back. Ooh. Now, if you want, you can dig your heels in, and when your tube is up, your hips will be down. And when your tube is down, your hips will be up. 
Reach those hips back without sitting down to keep the tension on your hip muscles, thighs. Do your best. You can do the squats all by themselves. Arms up or not. You could do the lat pull downs all by themselves. Or you could do both. It's up to you. Whatever you do, do your best. And when you're done, we get to alter the focus from this one of strength back to cardio respiratory or aerobic health for our heart and lungs predominantly. Okay. So let's get a sip of water first. Here's to your health. Okay. A lot of people ask me, what do you think is the best exercise? And I, I typically respond, well, I'm sure the best exercise for you is the one that you do. Ideally, the one you enjoy, because then you'll do it often, and then it will have a really great effect. Walking is great, but walking is not in and of itself enough to help our muscular strength and reduce our risk of falls and our bone density. Also, recent research, not so recent, has shown that doing good strength work can help create a hormone called the, a brain-derived growth hormone that really helps with our neuroplasticity and overall cognitive health. And doing strength work also reduces our risk of falls. So therefore, that's why we weave it in. But the most important muscle in your body to strengthen is right here, your heart. Because your legs will get stronger and your arms to some degree while we do that. So let's do that. We're gonna work on balance and I'm gonna show you in the chair However, if you want to be on your feet, take your time, maybe situate yourself over here on the right side or the left side, but not directly behind because you won't be able to lift your knees without bonking your chair. If you're in your chair, sit tall. If you're in the air, stand tall. Best posture, check your surroundings. We're going to do a lift two, three, march two, three. It goes lift two, three, march two, three, lift. Two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three. You got your chair for your balance check. Keeping your best posture, you could also tap your toe down for a little balance check. Let's add a brain game. March, two, three, lift, two, three. Keep thinking about that. I'm going to transition to my feet. March, two, three, lift. Two, three, march, two, three, lift. Two, three, march, two, three, lift. Two, three. We're gonna think of things going A to Z through the alphabet. Let's say healthy foods that begin with the letter A, like avocado. You do your own list. B, bananas. You do your own list out loud. C, cauliflower. D is hard. D, dandelion grains. They're full of C. E, eggplant. How you doing? F, not french fries. G, <laughs> garden vegetables. H, whew, that's hard. Horseradish. I, hmm. Iceberg lettuce is mostly water. J, jicama. K, ooh. Kale. How about that? L. Ooh. Lemons. M. Mm. Mm, mango. N. Ooh. I don't know. O. Oregano. How are you doing? P. Parsley. Oh, there's a lot of P foods. Q. Quince. R. Are you with me? Radish. S. Hmm. Salad greens, tea, oh, turnips, you, oh, ugly fruit, B, uh, help me out, people, don't W, watermelon, yum, X, oh, xanthan gum, that's not really healthy, Y, yellow squash, 
Z, the other squash. Zucchini, how'd you do with that? <laughs> Hopefully you're making up your own things and not listening to my crazy ones. All right, on our scale of one to 10, how are you doing? Can you talk? We were talking while exercising. That helps build neuroplasticity. And that is the ability of our brain to keep getting stronger if we exercise it. Let's try to get over here on, let's get right in behind our chair. And this, from here, we can lift our heels up. Stay behind your chair. I'm gonna show you from this side what that looks like. Well, actually three on one side. Three, two, one, march, two, three, three, two, one. So the knee stays down, chest stays up. We could tap our toe down or hold our chair for balance. Check if we need it. Lift, two, three. Getting in behind my chair because I might need it. Staying in our low athletic stance. Adding a little bit of a row here if we want. This time, let's make a list backward from Z to A, and this time, instead of healthy foods, let's think of people's names. So Z, here we go. Zoe. Um, y. Yolanda. X. Xavier. How you doing? W. Walter. V. Victor. U. Ulysses. Hmm. T. Your S. T. I messed that up. Going backward is hard. How are you doing? R. Rhonda. Help me, Rhonda. S. Sarah. No, I went the wrong way, didn't I? Oh, my brain game is not going so well. How is yours going? <laughs> it would have been easier to go from A to Z, but I wanted to challenge us. I wanted to challenge you. I definitely challenged me. Hmm. So, wherever you are in the alphabet, good on you. Hopefully you're on your feet or in your seat, moving your body to the best of your abilities. I'm starting to feel this in my hamstrings. How about you? In fact, I want to make this my last set. And then she loose. Do a little assessment of our perceived exertion. How you doing? Shake the leg out. If you feel like you want to get a little stretch, fine. Keep your head above the level of your heart. If you're ready to move on, we're gonna try seven lifts, three marches. This time with hip abduction. While we do that, try to keep your body up. Pull the navel in. It's not a kick to see how high you could go. It's a lift so that we could keep our foot dorsiflexed and use those abductor muscles in the hips. So, right in behind your chair, in your athletic stance, let's lift right seven times. Seven, six, five, four. Put your wings out if you want. Ready? And left. Seven, six, five. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Let's count it down again. Seven, six, five, four, three. You got your chair if you need it? Two. And other side. Seven, six, Five, four, three, two. Let's count it up. One last set on each side. Two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, seven. Other side. One, counting up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wow. Okay. I felt a dull, achy sensation, heaviness in my hip muscles. Not in my joints. If you want to get a stretch on those muscles, go ahead and come to your slightly kickstand, cross-legged, pushing you into the hip stretch. Same on the other side. If it hurt you sudden sharp shooting or a stabbing sensation, then that means to stop. Anything that feels like kind of electrical, 
or it spreads. <clears throat> that means a nerve is being impinged, and we don't want you to get hurt. Okay, we're gonna do that one last time. This time we're gonna just pretend we got that jump rope again, and we'll just skip on one leg three times, and then march two, three, and then the other. Are right, you ready? Right leg, skip, two, three, march, two, three. We've got our chair for about a balance check. Skip, two, three. If we don't need the balance check, we can use both arms with our imaginary jump rope. Good. We're going at tempo. So I bet you know, if you wanted to work a little bit more on your heart rate intensity and a little bit more on your agility, you could try it double time. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. March, two, three. One, two, three. March, two, three. So fast feet in between. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Woo. Got your chair if you need it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do you have it? Do you want to try sevens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Last time on each side. One, two, three. Wow. All right. I feel like I'm getting a little workout. If I had to give it a, a rating from one being the lowest intensity and 10 being too high, today I feel like a five, six, closer to a six. How about you? And that's great. You could be working out at a three and that's great. What really matters is you do it regularly. Because remember the best exercise in the whole wide world for you is the one you do regularly. So squat a lot or squat a little, just squat some every day. <laughs> All right, we're gonna transition to another set of strength work. I'll show you in the chair and then you'll have the option to do it standing. That's the slow down music and I'm not ready for it yet. Well, we can get ready. Come on with me, do a couple squats. We just have one more set of strength work. We're going to focus on one arm, one leg movements. So let's get a sip of water. Stepping mindfully to the side, leaning to the side. Take your time in getting your hand weight. If you have two smaller ones and you can hold them carefully in one hand, that's fine. If you have a jug and it's a little heavy, you can always assist with the other hand. We're going to scooch slightly to the right, lock our right upper arm and elbow to our body, sit tall, and just do four arm curls, bicep curls. Try not to let the weight hang in the bottom or balance at the top. Work in that zone. Now, with this heavy weight, we're going to do four side lateral raises. Woo, shoulders working hard on this one. I'm keeping the arm bent. If it was too easy, you could stick it out there. Whoa. Now, four shoulder overhead presses. A little at first, sitting tall. Medium, it feels good. All the way up, if that does not hurt you. Okay, so I showed you seated. You can, if you like, switch arms and do it seated. Or, if you like, you can stand on the left with the weight in your left arm. We're gonna stand on our left leg, pace that left arm, to our body, left elbow, palm up. You can put your right toe down and challenge your balance, or you could float it in the air. Got our chair there as we do just four arm curls. Slow. Balancing the whole time on one foot if we can. Okay, put your right foot down. Stand on your right foot, pull up to the left toe 
or lift that left foot all the way up. And we're going to do our side lateral raises with a hip abduction, if you like. Good. Put that left foot down, wrap your weight, lift your right heel behind you, and see if you can press that weight overhead, left arm, and press that right heel back. Keep the belly pulling inward. Keep the hips tight. We're not going to do too many of those. And you can switch it over to your right, whether you're seated or standing. Let's do one more set, just a short set of four. So right arm pasted to the body, palms up. Weight is in our right foot. We're gonna pull up to that left toe and do our bicep curls. This time if you want with a knee lift or keeping that toe on the ground. I think that was four, but let's do one for good measure. Left foot on the ground, pull up to that right toe or pull the toe up and try your side lateral raises with your hip abduction. This one's hard for me. That was four. Try one more for good measure. Put your weight in your right foot. Wrap your right arm near your shoulder. Pull your left heel up behind you. Balancing on your right foot. You got your hand on the chair if you need it. Push the weight up. Push the left heel back. So we're doing an overhead press and a leg press behind us. How about one more for good measure? Woo. That was hard. Just balancing on one leg is a great strength exercise. Now if you've got your weight in your hands and you hold it close to your chest, keep your chin up and your hips back, feet touching the chair. See how it feels to do a little extra weight with your body weight squat. That's one way you can continue to um, challenge yourself if it's really easy now to just do body weight squats. All right, we are going to finish off with a little seated stretch, a little relaxation. Did I run out of music already? I must have run over on time. No, we're doing fine. Okay, let's see. I want to put on some soft music. And then, well, that's why it was only a 50 minute long um, playlist. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, I'll just run that song back. If you haven't already had a sip of water, here we go. Many of you know, by the time you watch this, we may have started some in-person classes at the Yellow Springs Senior Center. We may be limited with the number of people, so I'm in the Red Book, call me. Um, you can call the Senior Center, but they're not keeping an ongoing list. I'm just checking in with them when I have the class populated. Also, they're going to let me know what they decide when the board meets here later on this week. Like I said, the only constant is change. And change is in the air. Change is everywhere. And change is something we have to remain flexible, not just with our bodies, but particularly with our minds and our spirits. We have to keep an open mind, keep our eyes wide open. Keep an open heart and be kind first to yourself and, and then towards others as best you can. Sometimes it's harder, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's just breathe for a moment. See if you can breathe in through your nose. Really fill your lungs from the bottom where we're going to relax our abdominals now. Up through the middle part of our lungs, expanding our ribs all the way up into our chest. 
And likewise, as we exhale, the lungs will deflate naturally, effortlessly from the top to the middle, ribs coming closer together naturally to the bottom. Our diaphragm muscle will contract and push out stale air. So relax your arms, relax your body, relax your mind, and breathe just as you would. Smell your favorite smell, maybe sitting in the pine forest, or breathing in the relaxing salty air on a beach somewhere. Relax your belly and let that breath fill your beautiful, pink, expansive, elastic lungs from the bottom to the top. Our bodies are miraculous. The fact that I can talk to you while balancing on one foot and maybe not going backward through the alphabet, that's a lot. <laughs> And I, I don't want to take it for granted. I want, it, I want to have fun while enhancing my ability to do that with you. Okay, let's turn to the side and continue with our mindful breathing as we stretch some of these hardworking muscles. Sideways seated with your left tip off the chair a bit. Hinge forward slowly. Gently, slowly coaxing that left knee to a place almost directly under the left hip, or if your hips are flexible, a little behind the hip. That's sitting tall, ears over shoulders over hips. Inhale fully, up, 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 and away. Maybe it feels good to open your spine a little. And when you're ready to exhale, Stretch through that left side of your body. Ah, ease out of that stretch. And let's do a little gentle spinal rotation from here, looking to the right side of the room. Keep the crown of the head pointing straight up. And as you exhale, gently look closer to the back of the room. Gently. Take a deep belly breath, and you can feel the, the muscles around your spine expand with your ribs. Exhale and stretch your eyes a little further, kind of looking over that shoulder, and unwind, easy does it. We'll do the other side, but before we do, let's get a nice chest opener or a cow in breath, spreading arms wide, opening the chest, and then exhale to cat, interlacing fingers, pushing out all the stale air. That felt good. You want to do it again? Good. If you didn't like that stretch, you could substitute any different stretch that suits you today. Hey, mm. we're going to finish off with this whole body side seated quadricep hip flexor side of the torso stretch, sitting with the right hip ever so slightly off of the front edge of the chair, hinging forward slowly so we don't get a cramp or hurt anywhere. Let the weight of that right knee drift down. Feel free to get comfy and let the crown of the head stretch upward with your breathing in. Maybe your right shoulder doesn't want to go overhead. That's fine. Um, you can keep it down there close to the joint. Inhaling up, up, up. And then exhaling, stretching the right side of the torso. Stay here and enjoy a, a really good, refreshing, relaxing, Inhale, and straighten up with your exhale. We're going to do, finish off with our gentle spinal rotation. So keeping this crown of the head directly over the heart and the hips. When you're ready to exhale, 
rotate from looking at the left side of the room to near the back side of the room. From here, inhale, fill your spine, lengthen up, and ribs widen out. And if you like, as you exhale, stretch your eyes, just looking sideways, side eyes over that shoulder. Eyes need to be exercised too. All right, well, I had a great, grand, glorious time exercising with you. I hope you're staying safe still. That means sometimes wearing your mask. Definitely in the summer temperatures, staying hydrated. Really work at that um, because high dehydration is one of the leading causes of sending us to the emergency room or just dizziness, headache. Yeah. When I'm able to, in July, offer some in-person classes at the senior center, my hope is to continue offering it one day a week via the Community Access Yellow Springs. So we'll see how that goes. It, it, there's been a lot of changes, and like I said, we all have to roll with the changes. And, and do carry your mask with you wherever you go. Some places need it because there's some folks, like young children, who have not been able to get vaccinated or their health conditions do not permit them to safely get a vaccination. So we wear this to protect everyone, not just ourselves. So, hey, keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.